sometimes you might want to create charts and dynamic dashboards from your data just like this. And in this video, you're looking at how you can build dashboards in Airtable that are called interfaces. So based on your data in your Airtable base, you can create charts, forms, as well as summary data at an aggregate level. And then Airtable interface can look something like this, for example, with numeric values that are automatically calculated based on the data in specific tables that you select. You can have charts, different types of charts, and you can also create forms through Airtable interfaces with the new form builder. And you can then share interfaces and forms to the web. When it comes to sharing interfaces in particular, sharing the interface without sharing all the underlying data in the Airtable base is a feature only available on paid plans, whereas interfaces broadly are available on all Airtable plans. So in this video, we are looking at Airtable interfaces, all the elements that you can use, how to set them up, and what they include. To explore Airtable interfaces, we are using this Airtable base that is called Startup Fundraising CRM. It is a template which you can find in the description. And this Airtable base is composed of four tables that are related with each other. There are contacts. These are individuals in the network of investors. There are companies. Each contact will be linked to one company or multiple ones. And each company will have multiple contacts or potential investors. Each contact will also have one or multiple interactions. These are the touch points when we speak with potential investors. And then there is a wiki table that is for internal use only and it contains SOPs or any templates for communicating with investors and raising capital. Here we are in the data tab and this is where the tables live and where the actual data is manipulated by daily users. You can then see there is an automations tab that is outside of the scope of this video so we are not looking at that. And then there is a third tab that is called interfaces and that's what we are focusing on on this video. When you click on interfaces if you do not have any interface then you will be prompted to create a new interface and I'm going to show you what it looks like right now but in this case there is already an interface that is a dashboard with some summary data as well as charts for different metrics. You can find more details about exactly what these graphs are in the dedicated video for this template. But this is an Airtable interface. And you can see here on the left hand side panel that there is the interface that is called Fundraising CRM Interface Template. And within each interface, there can be multiple pages. So in this case, we just have one page called Fundraising CRM Dashboard. But if you want, we can add additional pages to the interface. So right now, now, if I look at the preview, this is what the interface looks like. There is the dashboard and the only page displayed with all the data. But if I were to add a new page here, let's say I had a list, text, finish. And now if we preview it, you can see that there is a left panel where I can navigate to the different pages within the interface. So if you have different kind of data points to share with people in an interface, then this is what pages can be helpful for. Distinguishing things that you want to share with people and different kind of data that you want to show. And then the left hand side panel can also be closed when navigating an interface. For now, let's delete this page and let's look at elements in an interface. The first time that you create an interface, you will be prompted to select the layout or what kind of interface you want to create. So you can show a list that is a list of the records from your table or multiple tables. If you want to create multiple lists within the interface, or you can have a gallery view, a Kanban, a calendar, timeline, or a form, which is still a view of a table. That's how it is considered in a table. But this is also part of interfaces since not long ago. So we're going to explore forms in detail a bit later in the video. But for now, you can see that here you can create specific views of tables within an interface. And these views are the same views that you can see also on the data tab within a table. So if I'm to create a list, for example, let's look at this here, we're going to select the table that I'm going to pull data from, let's say contacts, and I'm going to do finish. And right now I have this contacts page and contacts list in here, I can sort I can filter and you can see here, people can also print the list, which can be very useful for some people or businesses. And then you can see here the settings of this list. So you can give it a title, the source table, there is contacts, the visualization. So you can also switch to different views that are the same views that you can find in the data tab within a Table. You can add filters, elements such as tabs like this, different views essentially, that's what tabs are, drop downs where you can provide people with filtering capabilities in a drop down fashion and you can allow users to sort, search, filter or toggle off these options and that option will disappear accordingly on the interface view. Printing and buttons which is another element of our table interfaces that we're going to explore later. So that's how you can create a view of a table within an interface using very similar layouts to what you have within our table tables. Now let's add the new page and look at the other options. You can create a dashboard that is a visualization of data exactly like it is in the example page that I have with different elements that you can add here. 
We can also create record views that are a detailed view of records where on the left hand side there are all the records and on the right hand side there is a view of all the specific fields and data points that you want to show for each record on the interface specifically. Record summary is a view of a specific record and blank if you want to start with a blank canvas and add your own elements. So let's look at the dashboard right now and if I'm to create a dashboard and do next I will select the source table where I want to get the data. It could be contacts and then do next and here you will see that there are some elements that are already present in a dashboard. Filter allows people to filter data or the connected elements within the interface to dynamically change graphs. Number is a summary of the data at an aggregate level. It could be number of closed investments for example. So in total within the contacts table how many people actually invested and that's the summary data. We can also have a bar chart for example, a pie chart or other types of charts. And within these elements you can see that if I click on the arrow I can also set them up as I wish. So if I set the filter I can add the condition that I want people to select within the interface or I can also just hide all of these maybe start from scratch if I want which I can also do by choosing start from blank interface from the previous tab that we saw. Often let's do test let's call this test interface and finish and now you can see here we have a blank interface and now we can add all the widgets that we want within it. There are some basic elements such as text that could be a simple description, a divider, a line, a grid that's a grid view, a calendar, calendar view of a table within our base, Kanban timeline only available on the team plan, gallery, list and these are all the views and we saw them earlier already how to create them. And then we have charts, numbers, a record picker, filter and button. So if you look at chart we can then drag and drop the element you can see here I can move around and decide the layout specifically of this chart. Let's say we want to add this centrally within our interface here and when I do that I will then have the chart options on the right hand side. I can select what kind of chart do I want to show. So it could be bar, line, pie, donut or scatter. If I want to have a bar chart I can then continue with the data where the data is coming from that is the source allowing user to print charts and then selecting what kind of records I want to show in this chart to aggregate the data and actually compose the chart. Next up I will set up the x-axis for example here that is by default primary status and I can order it and then the y-axis so the vertical axis right here what do I want to actually calculate within this graph and in this example we look at the distinct value of number of records per status so this bar chart is displaying the number of contacts per primary status. The primary status is a way to keep track of the approval process of potential investors along the pipeline and so in here we can see that there are six approved investors that we are in contact with and that are potentially investing. One investor is keep for later so we, he, they are not interested in investing right now maybe we want to keep them around for later in case of a more advanced round of our startup and then not a fit if the investor doesn't fit with the current round or future ones. But we do not just have the record count option we can also show a summary of a field. For example in this case if we have numeric fields for example amount funded we can then aggregate as we wish also group by specific values. And we can see here for example in the status of approved the amount funded is $500,000 for now and we can see the data over time change. That is how you set up a graph. The same exact settings apply for all the other graphs. So you select x-axis, y-axis, a bit of data and that's it. So it's a pretty basic feature and then when it comes to appearance you can select the color from a predefined set of colors. You can also change them here. You can add the title of the graph which will show up at the top like that. A description at the bottom, the x-axis title and the y-axis title. The orientation you should be horizontal like this or vertical like before and labels if I want to show the record directly above each bar in the chart. That is how you create a bar chart or any type of chart on an Airtable interface. You can see here you have the option to go wider or narrower on the interface layout. When it comes to the number element you can drag and drop it as well on the interface layout and then here you can choose the source which could also be other tables for example companies and then you can do a record count or a field summary. So you can also choose a field which could be total contacts for example and summary type it could be the sum of total contacts from companies. It is not a very useful data but that is how you can create a numeric aggregation for specific KPIs that you have. So as long as you know exactly what you want to calculate and you have the data in the Airtable base to support those calculations so you have specific fields that will over time give you that data then you can use a number element on an Airtable interface to calculate that KPI very easily and display it on the interface. The record picker allows you to select specific records from a table from your Airtable base and you can see here that I can select what field I want to pick from, for example, the contact owner right here. And you can see that then I can specify the details of the record picker right here on the right hand side where I can sort. I can allow users to create new records or in here you will see that as a user, if I am previewing this, I can see a list of all the contacts and I can choose them from here.
and finally filter and buttons when it comes to filter this is an element that allows you to connect to a specific chart or multiple charts on your interface and filter based on specific criteria so in here if i go to the source that would be contacts and that's okay then i can connect it to the test graph that i created before and i can add the filter condition for example i can add contact owner is and then let it be selected by the user. So then if I go to preview, you can see uh, I can do contact owner is this person and you will see that the data will change dynamically. Right now, all the data is assigned to me and that is why the data doesn't change dynamically. But if I were to do a bit of change here, for example, deselecting the contact owners and then going back and you will see that the data has changed right now to only approved and not a fit. But then if I do blank, then it goes back to normal. So these are dynamic filters that change data. A very powerful feature, especially if you want to do scenario planning or allow people to play with data in a way that can enable them to see what if something changes. It could be in a financial scenario or any type of scenario in your business based on the data that you have. And finally, buttons. Buttons are clickable by the user of the interface. And you can see here a list of actions. You can update a record within any of your tables, copy link to a record, delete a record, apply a record, template, go to the previous next record go to interface page open an external url as well as run an automation that is under the automations tab that you can set to be triggered at the click of a button and that is it for add table interfaces when it comes to dashboard capabilities displaying data from tables as well as displaying graphs and dynamically playing with graphs through filters buttons and record because the next key feature available on add table interfaces are forms. Forms are essentially a view of a table that previously were only available here on each table. You could create a form like this and that form would show up just like a view on the left sidebar menu under views right there. But right now forms have moved to interfaces and in here you can create forms. Forms are then shareable to the web also through password protection and users can fill out that form to submit data to your add table table without having access to the data in that table. So if I'm to create a form I can select the table where I want this form data to end up. For example, contacts, create form. And you can see here, I can add the logo or a image. I can then name this form right here. For example, submit contacts. And I can select the fields that I want to show or hide also directly from the layout of the form here. You can see then I can also customize the message after the form is submitted. And if I go in here, I can add the description as well as add different groups within an add table form. So for example, I can add a group, call it basic data. And in here, we can add maybe the name of the contact right there. And then in here, when I click on the field, I can see that uh, I can customize the title, name or something else. The source, which is connected to the name field in the contacts table automatically. The size of the field input, default or large. And this then, if I go large, then displayed as heading in bold. If it is instead smaller, it is displayed as simple text in paragraph size. I can also add helper text right here beneath the name as simple paragraph. And finally, I can also add custom visibility based on conditional logic. In this case, it is not available yet because that's the first field that we have on the form. So I can't hide it conditionally, but it will be available for other fields that we use afterwards. We can also pre-populate the field with the default value. And now, for example, let's do primary status right there on the right hand side. And you can see here, because that's a drop down select field i can also choose how it shows up and in here i can do visibility maybe condition where name is not empty so if the name is empty that will not show up but if i type something here the primary status will also show up accordingly and you can also make fields required through this toggle you can create as many groups as you like when setting up a group like for example basic data here is the first group that we have in this form you can see that i can also make the group view only that is the user can't edit the values within that field or the fields within that group this could be useful for example if i want to pre-populate fields with specific values and not allow users to edit those values maybe because they want to track some specific metrics internally in that case you could set up a group and then restrict access to view only and then pre-populate those fields by using the url parameters which you can do whenever you have an interface once you're done you can publish that interface for example in this form that i can share form and that opens up this pop-up menu. You can select what access level you want to give to users. For example, as to anyone on the web, I will then copy the link to this one. And then you can populate a value directly by adding URL parameters. So I will do question mark, prefill name equal Simo, for example. Now, if I enter this URL, 
you will find that the name is automatically pre-filled. And now there is test because I used this before and so the form remembers my previous submission. And if I open the form in incognito window with the pre-fill URL parameter, you'll see that it works as expected. And you can also notice that you can add fields within a group or within a form in general by clicking this plus button and that will show all the available fields from the add table table that you selected as the source of the form. And that is everything there is to know fundamentally about Airtable interfaces and how you can visualize your data from your Airtable base into dynamic dashboards within Airtable itself. You can find a written guide in the description about Airtable interfaces and everything you need to know. And you can also find all the relevant links in the description of the video if you want to dive deeper into Airtable interfaces. For now, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.